the panel that goes on the back of the body is called the end piece and it's listed here underneath body and then end and then we cut two pieces that are four and one quarter by five. Now the four and a quarter by five may be a little bit too big so let's take some measurements and we'll cut, I suggest you cut a piece out of cardstock first before you cut it out of your uh, chipboard. First we'll measure the side dimension and we'll do that in a couple of places and we'll take the narrowest one and for me that is four and a quarter and the top inside here we'll again measure that in a couple places and take the smallest one and again for me that is five inches so I ended up with four and a quarter by five we want to allow a little bit of room all the way around for this panel so that it's not a super snug fit and also to allow room to wrap the paper around it. So I'm going to cut it a sixteenth of an inch shorter than those two dimensions. So if our length was five inches, I'll cut the length to four and fifteen sixteenths. And then our measured width was four and a quarter, so we'll cut that a sixteenth inch shorter, which would be four and three sixteenths. So now I have my piece cut to that those dimensions, and I've also done some measuring to cut off the corners, just like we did with the support pieces. I measured in an inch from each side, and an inch from each side on the top and then down three quarters of an inch and then on the bottom it's up three quarters of an inch on each side and then in a half an inch from each corner. So I'll cut those pieces off and then we'll do a test fit. Now when you put that piece of paper in here you should see space around all of the edges. It'll be um, a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch, but you should definitely have some space around all of the edges. And if you don't, just trim off a corner or the ends or whatever till you have um, space around all of those edges. So once you're happy with the size of your uh, cardstock, you can use this as a template and make sure that when you trace around that you cut inside the lines that you trace. So instead of tracing around the template, I actually just attached it with some temporary adhesive and then cut around the edges with my big scissors and that gave me a really accurate uh, cut. So we needed to do this twice because there's two uh, pieces to the back panel and then I'll glue them up and to make a double thickness. So once that glue up is dry, go ahead and put that chipboard piece in the end and just look at all of your edges and make sure you're still happy and do any fine tuning that you might need and then we're ready to proceed. So to line the inside of our end panel, going to use some of the same peacock blue cardstock. I've cut a piece that is 5 8 inch bigger all around. I do not have the panel attached to it at this point. And then I'm just going to cut some slits that are perpendicular to each side like so. So I'll cut these wedges out of the corners here and do that all the way around. Once I've cut out all those little wedges, I'll just take my bone folder and fold up each one of these and give it a crease right along that edge. Now we can remove our chipboard and just go ahead and reinforce those creases with your bone folder. So now we can take our piece of cardstock 
and fit it inside of this end panel and just kind of open up the tabs a little bit and then we can put our magnets on and if you're like me and you have magnets that have an adhesive side make sure it's facing up because we'll want those to attach to our chipboard and I think you can hear the snap as they go in they naturally seek their partners so now um, just to be a little bit on the careful side, I'm going to add a drop of diamond glaze or glossy accents to the back of those magnets. And obviously if you don't have self-adhesive magnets, you'll want to use uh, this kind of adhesive to um, get them attached to the chipboard. So I'll put a drop on each one of those magnets. And then I'll fit my piece of chipboard in between those tabs and put some good pressure on those magnets and then let them set up and dry. And once enough time has elapsed so that that adhesive is set up we can use the tabs to pull this panel out of the back. Just be careful because with those four strong magnets on here uh, you, you don't want to tear the paper. Now we'll pop this chipboard out of here and we'll get ready to attach it permanently. So I have everything prepped here. On the cardstock I put half inch score tape on all of the tabs. And on the chipboard I filled in with some score tape. I also took my marker and went on the corners here a little bit on each side just in case when we fold these over we get any gap there that'll camouflage the chipboard. So um, I've got my pieces oriented so that I'm just ready to flip this over and put that inside and so I'll remove my score tape backing from the chipboard and run a ring of glue around the edges here uh, of each of the magnets before I put it inside. I'll put it inside and then I'll wrap the tabs. Here's the back panel all wrapped and I've burnished everything down nicely. Now you probably want to try to fit it in there uh, into the back but I would say make sure you don't put it all the way in because uh, just kind of test it with your fingers on one side or the top or the bottom because without something on here to be able to pull it off with those four strong ma magnets in there if you put it all the way in here uh, you may not be able to get it back out without um, marring up this paper so resist that urge until we get the uh, tail attached so now we want to cover this back uh, outside and we can use our template that we made to cut the chipboard to uh, trace that onto our decorative paper. You may find that it's a little bit big but um, you can always trim it off if you like to see a little bit of a reveal. And this is the paper that I'm going to use for the back. You can of course use any paper that you want. So I'll go ahead and get that cut out and prepped. So here's my piece of pattern paper and I've inked the edges and then I have complete score tape coverage here on the back which is very important because the tail gets attached to this so we want to have good adhesion between the decorative paper and our chipboard here. So I will just um, remove my backing and get this centered on here and give it a really good burnish. So here's the completed back panel. We're ready to add the tail to it when the tail gets completed. And again, resist the urge to put it completely into the back end of the fish at this point. For the tail, we have some medium weight chipboard circles that are listed here underneath the tail section and then under lightweight chipboard 
we have a couple of pieces for tail one and then we have templates that we're going to use for tail sections two through five and then these are the tail section tail templates and here each one of these templates has some additional information on them uh, and he, this is section one these all refer to sections of the tail there's five sections all together section one is built similar to how we did the portholes and this information on the inside and the outside is just a repetition of what's in the cutting guide and the C1 and in most cases C2 that are listed here refer to the circle sizes that are, are used so for instance for section 1 both the circle 1 and circle 2 are 3 inches now for section 2 and section 4 they they not only list their circle sizes under the C1 and C2 but they also list an R1 and R2 and those stand for radiuses now you you should cut all of these templates out just like we have been uh, cutting them right inside of the leaving the line behind but for templates 2 and 4 which are arcs of a circle you may want to draw those arcs with a compass and so that's what these radiuses are for so let me show you here with section 2 we're going to start with the larger one radius 2 which is 3 and 3 eighths and I'll just set my compass here to 3 and 3 eighths and then mark a point that is a little bit in so I know where I'm aiming for and I'll just draw an arc none of these uh, are larger than 180 degrees so you can just draw a semicircle here and I know that's hard to see with this pencil but take my word there's a semicircle there and then look on the template for R1 which in section 2 is two and a half and set your template to two and a half I mean your compass to two and a half put that in that same point down here and draw that arc and now you have perfectly drawn arcs that you can use and take your template and just use it to mark the length of, of them And I should say that when you're uh, drawing these, try to get them as much as possible following this kind of bend of the uh, chipboard. It'll be a lot easier than if you drew them on the side that's stiffer. So section four is similar. We would first set our compass, and I would just probably flip my piece of chipboard around here and first set my compass to uh, R2 which is 3 and 9 sixteenths and 9 sixteenths is a sixteenth of an inch larger than a half an inch again I'll make a little mark down here so I know where to put my compass each time and draw my outside arc R2 and then R1 is two and three quarters, so I'll just reset my compass to two and three quarters. And now I can draw that arc. And then get my section four template and just use that again for the length. Now for section three, it's kind of this odd shaped piece, so you'll definitely just have to use the template for that. And then for section five, 
if you want to draw this inner circle with an arc, there's a radius given here of 1 and 9 sixteenths. So you can go ahead and uh, draw that circle if you want or just trace out the template. So those are the, the cutting guides for the tail. So I've cut out all my parts to the tail and I just used my scissors to cut the curved shapes. That was easy enough on this lightweight chipboard. And then here I have the circles all laid out as they go for each tail with tail the pairs, tail one, two, three, four, and here's tail five over here at the side. And then I just want to take and pick up the larger one of each of these pairs and tail one they're both the same so it doesn't matter and then on those that I just picked up I'm going to use my inch and a quarter uh, shape circle die to cut a circle in the center it doesn't have to be precise in that center so you don't need to measure but just get it as close as possible so I'll do that to these four circles so I have the circles cut out now as you can see. Now I'm just going to put the circles with their uh, outside pieces just to keep everything straight. And then we can start with circle, num I mean tail section number one. For tail number one, we'll take our half inch outside piece and dry fit it around and mark and cut to length. This is, uh, we're building this just like we built the portholes. And then I, once I have that cut to length, I'll put a bead of glue around the outside of uh, the solid three inch circle and put that in place going around. And you can put a little piece of cardstock on the inside to hold that join better. Now check and make sure that that 3 inch circle is seated flush with this rim. You want this to be nice and um, flush with the edges on the bottom side here. And we'll just let that dry for a few minutes. And then after that outside piece is set up for a minute, we can take our inside piece and put it in the inside here and measure it to length. It's okay if it's a little bit short. Uh, and go ahead and measure and cut that to length. And then once you have that strip to cut to length, go ahead and install it on the inside, making sure it's seated all the way down against the back. And then once we have that inside piece in, we can run a bead of glue around that channel and pop in the second piece. So there's our completed tail section one, and we can just set that aside. So for tail section two, I've cut a little piece of cardstock and backed it with some score tape to use as a join and we'll start with the smaller circle and attach the inside ring to that just going around like this. So I'll put a bead of glue on the outside and then um, put a bead of glue right on this edge and attach that like so. Now make sure your disc is at the bottom so that this is nice and flush on the outside here and just let that set up for a few minutes. And then once the first side is set up, run a bead of glue around the inside and put this second piece in. Now the reason for the hole in the center is to give you a place to grip onto to be able to get that put into place correctly. Now you may need a tip of a craft knife to encourage it to fit in there, but if you just kind of chase it along, it'll go along and then make sure that you have it as even with the edge of the side as possible. 
just reach in and kind of pull it up a little bit if it needs to. And then give some pressure over here where the side seam is especially a little bit and let that set up. Now piece three is this kind of odd shaped piece and the reason it's like that is to kind of give the tail a little flip up and we'll again put a little cardstock tab here on the the outside and the shorter p end here is going to wrap around the solid piece we'll just put a bead of glue around there and on our ends and join it just as if it was a regular arced circle again you want to make sure that that end is flush with the sides here and let that dry before you go to put the ringed part in and then once the base has dried we can run a circle of glue around the inside of the top and pop this piece in and then we can set piece number three aside Section 4 is another arced piece, so I've uh, added a piece of joining strip here on the end and I'll just put a bead of glue around the solid circle and on the end of the arc and put that smaller side in place there. And then when the base is thoroughly dry I ran a, another ring of glue around the inside there and I'll just pop this top piece in. And now there's tail piece 4 completed. So for section 5 I've cut a piece of cardstock that's about one and a half by 2 and I backed it with some score tape and I'm just going to use that as a join here. I'm going to join these two sections into that ring and give that a good burnish and trim off that excess score tape. And now just run a bead of glue around the edge there and I'll put the circle in. You want to make sure that you've pushed that all the way to the bottom and then I'm just going to run a bead of glue around the inside here just as some reinforcement down in that seam. Make sure everything is flat on this side. I can see right here I need to push this down a little bit and then I'll just let that dry. put the tail together we'll start with a piece of the blue cardstock that is an inch and a half wide and right now I just have it 12 inches long and I'm going to take section number one and wrap that around and then uh, mark it and cut it to length so that I just have a, a butt joint here at the ends. Now after I cut it to length I scored it at a half an inch and one inch to make three half inch channels and I prepped each one of those with some score tape. Now I'm going to remove the backing from the center uh, portion and I'll put that center portion on the uh, edge of tail number one. Now on the side with the solid piece of chipboard, no hole in it as opposed to this side, I'm going to cut some notches and wrap the blue cardstock to the inside here and so I cover this edge nicely. Now that I have all of my little notches cut, I can fold all these in and burnish them down. 
Now this area is going to get glued to the end piece and so I want this to be as flat as possible. So I'm going to cut a circle of paper to fit inside of here and a two inch circle should just fit inside of here. If yours may be more or less, so just measure it. Cut that out, back it completely with score tape and set that on this end. And once you've added that circle in the middle, make sure you give that a good burnish. Now tailpiece number two is going to get attached to tailpiece number one. It fits on, uh, directly on here and then we'll take some tabs from this and put them over here um, to finish off this edge. So I'm going to um, cut some wedges out of this side as well and then I'll be back. So now I've cut all my little wedges out of this paper and I'm ready to attach tail number two to tail number one and I'll just put some wet glue down inside of here and then we take the larger side of tail number two and put that in here on tail number one. That should fit just exactly in there. And once you have it in there, go ahead and fasten down all of your little tabs. Now you might have heard a little pop when I put that in. Be careful not to press too hard on these uh, surfaces. You might break that glue seal and I'll just uh, re-glue that um, after I finish putting my tabs down. To cover the join that we'll have between piece 2 and piece 3, I've cut a piece that's 8 inches long by th 3 quarters inch wide, scored it down the middle and added some score tape. And now I'm just going to make some slits that are about oh, a quarter inch apart on one side and I'll hold them back at least a sixteenth, about a sixteenth of an inch from where the crease is in the center. So I'll make those slits and then I'll be back to show you how to attach it. So I've made all my slits and I have the score tape backing removed. So now I'm going to just line up the fold edge with the edge of my uh, piece number two here and then because I made those slits it'll be able to expand as we go around here. So it's easier to see this if you just hold it and look at it like this and keep that center line aligned with the edge of the piece and just roll that around. Now when you get near the end you can see um, you'll probably need to trim off a little bit and just trim it off so that you can make a nice uh, butt joint there at the end. So I've got that ring completed and burnished around there and when I make the slits on this side to, to wrap to go around the next piece I'll make sure that I, my, I'm going to hold my scissors back a sixteenth of an inch from that fold but every time I make a cut a wedge it's going to come in between the slits on this side so I don't weaken that paper there. Once I have all my little tabs made I'll just gently pull them out of the way a little bit and then this side of tail number three is just a ring so we only need to put a ring around of glue here and then put that on. Remember just put pressure on the outside edge. If you put pressure on the inside you'll blow out that end and then just bring the little tabs up around. Now we're at ready to add a piece of cardstock to make 
this finishing strip and again what I'll do is cut about every quarter of an inch and I'll stay about a sixteenth of an inch away from that center seam and I've cut this about six and a half inches long I think it'll need to be trimmed a little bit at the end but I just don't want to have such a long piece to deal with so I'll get those slits made so I have all my slits made and again I'll line up that center crease and wrap this around and then I'll stop here and trim this to length now when we go to join this piece on the smaller end is getting joined so we don't have to cut wedges we just need to cut slits and just make sure that you cut them in between the ones we made on the other side and again stop about a sixteenth of an inch before that fold now I've made all my slits and I've gently opened them up and I'll put a ring of glue actually I can put more glue because I have two solid pieces coming together here and go ahead and get that piece centered and situated there and then join all the little tabs now to finish the seam between four and five I've cut a piece that is again three quarters of an inch wide this one's about eight inches long and now I'm going to cut little wedges out of this side but again I'll stop a sixteenth of an inch uh, shy of the fold and I'll probably make them about every uh, quarter to three sixteenths inch apart and remove about an eighth of an inch on the uh, triangular side of the wedge so I'll cut those and then I'll show you what I mean so here's my strip and I think you can see all of the little wedges that I cut out so now I'll just remove my score tape backing and then the side with the wedges is what gets attached to the piece that's already on here again hold your put your fold line right on that edge and then we'll just put this unit with this uh, finishing edge on the end aside for now because before we attach the final piece, piece number five, we need to do some finishing on it.